The fallout from Madam Web has been almost as interesting as the movie itself. Unfortunately, there was no falling out there. Because yes, the movie bombed, being the first time a Marvel movie hasn't appeared at number one in the box office since 2015. Because it got beaten by Bob Marley, with Madam Web making 25.8 million during its six day holiday weekend, which even loses out to Morbius, that made 39 in three. Depending what you wanted from the movie led to two main reactions. People either laughed, or cope and seethe. Well, except for one exception, I guess. That would come from the Hollywood Reporter, which said that the press tour became a tangled web of conspiracy theory. I mean, there are many ways to cope with a movie disaster, but pretending there's some kind of shadowy web of evil orchestrating its demise is definitely a new one. Because <laughs> the marketing for this movie was wild. We went from this comment before launch. You're gonna love it. In fact, I think you're gonna see it twice. Two easy layup questions which any actor should be able to answer. The winner for best picture at the Oscars will be... Oppenheimer? Yeah, he wasn't expecting that answer, love. That's incorrect. It's, her. <laughs> it's actually Madam Web. And even she's shocked that he would dare think that that's gonna win any awards. Okay. It's gonna be a Madam Web sweep, I think. Okay, that will also piss people off. Look, mate, just because I'm in a movie doesn't mean that I'm deluded, all right? <laughs> oh, Madam Web sweep the Oscars. Can you imagine? Oppenheimer gets like best sound, Madam Web, everything else. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm well aware of what I made. That's why I couldn't even be bothered to see it. Have I you seen Madam Web? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need any shadowy power structures to explain that one. I think we've all been thinking as time goes on, how long can you lose money before something has to change? How many times do you have to fail before you realize there might be a pattern here that we should change? So as Madam Web hits record lows, and you have to get a producer to come out and try and explain how come this movie in the Spider-Man universe isn't actually connected to it at all? Is it because you knew it was ass and wanted to desperately try and spare the other IPs that you put millions of dollars into? I'm pretty intuitive. Can you predict how well this interview's gonna end up? <laughs> Badly. <laughs> <laughs> One of our careers is over and- No, before I and SJ were involved, both of us really saw an advantage in not having the burden of the attachment to all this other stuff that's gone on. Yeah, there are all these other events that have happened, like the law. We didn't want to be tied to that. We wanted to make up our own new fantasy series with absolutely no law at all. Why would we want to benefit from the talent of others when we could make up our own talentless stuff from scratch? It really freed us in a way to tell a pure story. <laughs> it was certainly pure something. The story isn't just simply, I'm gonna stand up and become the hero. It's, I'm scarred, I don't want attachment, I definitely don't want responsibility, what the hell is happening to me? I'm going insane. Can't imagine why the movie didn't do better. <laughs> I just want absolutely freedom from everything, including all social relationships. I just want to sit in my own house with a cat, wine, and antidepressants. Personally, I think Madam Web could take the Super Bowl as well, but that's just, oh. that's just me. Might be why the most bizarre part of the story is for somebody who actively hates all people, why did she become a paramedic to save them in the first place? And then it changed to, what do I do now I'm in this situation? So for me, freeing ourselves of that obligation, in a sense, was very freeing and allowed us to do a more complex ride with the hero. Freeing yourself from the obligation of things such as the law, backstory, having to make a movie that makes sense. I have always really loved Marvel movies. I mean, what percent of Marvel movies have you seen? Uh, four percent. Four percent. <laughs> Just like she freed herself from the obligation of interpersonal relationships. <laughs> Once again, I say Hollywood needs a human to do the humaning for them. Sorry, I'm sad and lonely. In fact, Madam Web bombed so badly, people started to notice a little trend. There was a running theme in Madam Web that went through the marketing. The theme of empowerment. Taught me how to empower myself. I'd see, you know, all these powerful women to be the most powerful version of themselves. Why is she? Please. And yet that's not the audience for superhero movies and everybody knows it. Even when it came to Madam Web itself, it was dads and 12 year old boys that went there the most and liked it. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Probably disappointed by the time they got to the cinema though. Should just watch the red carpet like everybody else. But no, Sony went after young women with Madam Web. I mean, I don't even know why, unless you're gonna get Sydney Sweeney to do TikTok dances or something. I'm gonna show this Sydney! Anything else doesn't seem like it would attract 
your audience. Because they did get the marveled 50-50 split that they were asking for with 53% men and 47% women. But it was men over 25 that attended the most, with all ages of women coming quite fairly significantly lower. I'm told SJ Clarkson aimed to make a non-traditional Marvel movie. Well, at least that's accurate. They used to be good. Something in the spirit of a female thriller. And it's going sideways. I've gotten phone calls that the budget for this film is much higher than north of 100 million. So Google's banging on about 80. That's not even including the 60 million marketing. And the budget could have been well over 100 million. Only saved slightly with tax credits. We got handouts from the state. It allowed us to uh, lose less money. <laughs> That's why you've got people coming out and talking about how it could signal a shifting box office. Because there's already stories, albeit rumours, that Amazon Silk Spider Society axes their entire writer's room so it can be retooled for a male-skewing audience. Because it turns out people may slightly be realising that they are the audience. I mean, yes, if you spend 75% of your marketing budget exclusively on platforms where the guys don't go, you may be able to drag up the percentages to 50-50. Of course, targeting them with your movie will mean you lose money. So you can get the fabled 50-50 parity, it's just not something you want to do. This story about just firing your writer's room to make an entirely different thing. I don't really care if this is a rumour, because even if this isn't happening at Amazon, it's what should be happening at Amazon. If they didn't do before, they should be doing it tomorrow. <laughs> they don't even have to take the blame for it. Everybody thinks it's already happened. And if you want some cope that this doesn't signal a shifting box office, we'll Deadline talk about why did Sony have the scribes from Morbius to write the script? Because Well, they don't even answer it, because they go, well, they wrote the first script, but then Clarkson's writing partner changed it up for the one they actually shot. It's so, like, yeah, but you've still got the writers from Morbius to write the foundation of the script, which has literally every person in the world asking why. <laughs> Just means that our stories are worth telling, and I think the success review-wise of our film shows that our stories are worth telling. It doesn't help that this female-driven superhero arrived in the wake of the Marvels. It wasn't damaged by the Marvels. It was damaged by by what it was. This type of movie doesn't work because your target audience doesn't want it. That's the problem. You've got a demographic of people that would see the movie. Well, you're not targeting at them. You want to go for this mythical demographic. If only we could get them interested in superhero movies. But you can't. The superhero is about responsibility and accountability for your own actions. It's not the message they want. Barbie proved that. Many will say that fanboys are turning on female superhero movies, but that's a dog ate my homework excuse on behalf of the industry. Make a great movie and they'll turn out. Which is a good point but one you don't even understand that you've just made. The problem comes, what is a great movie? People talk about it as if it's an objective thing. Oh, it's just this is what good is. It's like, no, that's what you think good is. That's what somebody would have to make to please you. Each target audience has a different idea of what good is, which is why you have to target one of them. So if you aim your movie at the guys that go to the cinema and make something they want, you'll have a successful movie. Or you can make something for the people that don't go to the cinema, and I'm sure if they went, they'd absolutely love it. But they don't, so they're never gonna know. Of course, you could just go middle of the road and make a grey mush that nobody likes, but, you know, <laughs> that seems even more stupid. There's a hot chick over there, I'm gonna go talk to it. <laughs> While we're on the topic of stupid, Rachel Ziegler got named Best Action Movie Star of the Year at the People's Choice Awards, overcoming Keanu Reeves, Tom Cruise, and Gal Gadot. I mean, I'm not even sure why Gal would be nominated for it, but if you think that Rachel is a better action star than John Wick, or even the latest Mission Impossible, I'd want to know if you're living under a rock. On the plus side, though, she did have an incredible acceptance speech. Thank you! I love movies! I love making them! And I, and I am a fan of movies! I'm just glad that we're all here to appreciate movies like the movie people who do movies and i'm surrounded by movie fans tonight and and movie fans who voted and we enjoy movies all the movies every movie and I'm, I'm so thankful to everyone who's who's ever bought a ticket movies <laughs> no madam web was so bad that earthquakes were interrupting the interviews women is that an earthquake yeah. okay we just had an earthquake <laughs> Did you just do that? Did I? The planet itself was rejecting this movie. You didn't understand the villain. Was that an earthquake just It's the first earthquake I've ever felt in LA. You want a moment? <laughs> no, I'm okay, right. Okay, good. So all of those tangled theories, maybe there was something to them after all. My favorite part of this article is they are desperately trying to help her. Dakota was placed under such scrutiny, it became an absurdist tale about how clicks and engagement are farmed. Trying to make a narrative that Johnson hated Madam Web due to an increasingly headline-driven culture. The web became increasingly tangled when keyboard detectives playing at Columbo remembered her Instagram 
Instagram post. The narrative spun too far out of control for any logic now. Speculation about her thoughts on the interviews were embarrassing. Her interactions with interviewers were criticised for lacking enthusiasm. But if you go back and watch any of the press interviews she's done in her previous films, she's rarely an example of boundless energy. Her public vibe in press interviews is often notably deadpan and brutally honest. <laughs> yeah, THR, you can probably stop helping now. <laughs> If you could be in multiple places right now, obviously one of them would be this interview, because why would you want to be anywhere else? I'm having a great time, I love Me it too. Yeah, she's always boring in interviews and putting a foot in it. With friends like you, who needs enemies? That's why it's been interesting to see various places change their tune over time. The, the Mary Sue released one of the positive reviews for the show, and now they're like, blink three times if you need help, Dakota. I'll be the first to call out the exhausting chronically online narrative that she hates Madam Web. If you genuinely need to believe that to feel secure and dis liking this film? Well, good luck to you, I guess. Your shame doesn't work here. Largely because to try and make someone feel insecure with your projected opinion of them, they have to respect you first. The reason why I feel secure in not liking this movie is was because I've watched it. It's the principle of the thing. The online narrative about her interviews just make it funny. <laughs> but something isn't right here. I like how they have to slur you because they hate you, and then like, yeah, but I do agree though. Yeah, I mean, you are correct. Johnson's never been a stranger to calling out the dire trajectory of a film. The final cut of Madam Web is perhaps the leading example of just how dire the artistic consequences of those parameters can be, and then some. These people gave it a positive review, and now they're calling it dire artistic consequence. God forbid Sony ever decides to keep this excruciating shared universe chugging along. You marked it as fresh. Even in the unlikely scenario that Sony is ordering Madam Web 2, it would be hard to imagine someone as outspoken as Johnson wanting to be involved with another bomb. You like the movie! You can't shame people that don't like the movie and then call it an excruciating shared universe. If you can't make up your mind on something, you're the one who seems to be lacking intellectual integrity. It's the pair of anguish. It was used on women who had relations with the devil. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> but like, again, hating Madam Web might be going a bit too far. Bad faith players are obsessed with cheering on films' failures. I cheer on failures with the horrible movies. Because that's the best way to make an industry not make horrible movies. This is something that no film lover should be doing. I don't love those films. That's why I'm laughing when they fail. This isn't complicated. And the thing is, you seem to agree with me. Again, the Dakota Johnson hates Madam Web has gone a bit too far. Nevertheless, sounds like a fancy way of saying but to me. <laughs> you know what they say? Whatever you say but, everything that came before it, you can disregard. Johnson's refreshingly honest takes on Hollywood in the past certainly don't imply that she's happy with how Madam Web was handled. If you agree with people, why are you so desperate to try and slur them as you do it? I'm really getting those, you're right, but I wish you weren't kind of vibes. You just hate that the people are so correct, it would make you look like a literal idiot to think otherwise. <laughs> it's like, well, there's no way I can disagree with them this time. I hate it. You're gonna make me beg, aren't you? You can't help but wonder if she's holding anything back. I think we could say what she's not holding anything back in these interviews. The stuff she, she has admitted to already, She's not holding anything back. But hey, I mean, she picked up a nice check. So who's to say? Yes. Who cares about the quality of the movie? You got paid. <laughs> but it's definitely us which have the uh, the wrong attitude about things. Who knows though, maybe they're still a bit um angry. You remember that firing of the writer's room and being retooled? Well, they hate it because why would men get anything? They have everything already. I think the issue you've got is when the movies were for them, they were successful. You're kind of just arguing with economics here. Amazon now wants them to make it for a male skewing audience. This might prove difficult considering Silk centers on Cindy Moon. Put her in a costume like the Madame Web red carpet. It's a done deal, folks. <laughs> It's depressing, and all too predictable that Amazon would want to gear this to a male audience. After all, their most successful content is male-driven like The Boys, Reacher, and Bosch. I have a feeling that's the kind of point that I should be making. Now you just find it depressing that the people you want to watch movies don't. What are you gonna do? Kidnap them and tie them up in a cinema? I'm just of the opinion that people who want to watch movies should, and movies should be made for the people that want to watch them. You're like, no! I've drawn up a pie chart, and we've got to force people at gunpoint into the cinema until the numbers match! So that's the same point of view in the world. It's afraid. It's afraid! No!
It's not like there's a shortage of Spider-Man content. There are 10 Spider-Man movies. Are men really out here thirsting for more spider content? As opposed to who? We've just tried it with Madam Web. I know you liked it. The audience didn't though. It's not even really about our whatever group interested in more spider content. It's about who goes to the cinema. Can't women just have one thing? You did. You said Madam Web. That's a thing. That's designed for you and you liked it. Honestly, I blame Madam Web. I'm glad we're on the same page. Now it'll be years before we get another woman-driven spider film or series. Yeah, because nobody wants to lose any more money, love. The industry talks a lot about identity, identity, identity. And besides, this is one driven by what you want. They're just gonna make it for the audience, according to rumor. Meanwhile, Morbius bombed, but we're only getting more depressed superhero vampire and Jared Leto movies. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. That's because he's an actor and not responsible for the movie or the demographic of the movie. Nobody's saying that Dakota Johnson should be held responsible for Madam Web failing, despite the fact that the flop wiped out an entire plan for new movies. Madam Web wasn't even really about Madam Web. That wasn't supposed to be. It was about setting up the four other people so that they could all have their own spin-off series. How on earth they thought that was gonna work when none of them were actually superheroes in the first movie, I don't know. Or when they made them look like this. That's not gonna get people in the cinema. On Wednesday night, you could actually watch advanced purchase sales declining in real time as buyers were refunding their tickets. A Marvel's major theatrical chain insider said, it really says something when you'd rather have Shazam 2 numbers. Now it makes a bit more sense why that embargo was so close to the release date of the movie. Because they knew they'd made an ass movie. They knew what the critics were gonna say before they'd seen it. And it had a visual impact on the sales in real time. Sony is now finding itself under the gun to reevaluate how it makes comic book movies. Or rather, the audience that it should be making them for. Morbius was a critical bust and much maligned by fanboys online. Are they fanboys if they malign it with a really load of hardcore Morbius fans going, I wish this stuck to the law. It's a bit like Madam Web. No one's really having a discussion about it sticking to the law. Because nobody knows it in the first place. But there is no hope for Madam Web. We're not going to see another Madam Web movie for another decade plus quipped one industry veteran. You think you're gonna get another movie in a decade? I think that's hopeful. I think you've killed this character. <laughs> Sony tried to make a movie that was a different type of superhero movie. Yes. One where there wasn't any superheroes in it. I mean, it was a brave choice. Can you imagine if you turned up at the Super Bowl and they went, we all know you're here for the Super Bowl, but we're actually gonna play tennis for a bit. So just because you want to do something new doesn't mean it's good. If it's not what the audience wants. So then you start talking about how everyone's trying to make up a new superhero franchise and superhero fatigue, which is basically bad movie fatigue. They have to nerf to go that Madam Web seemingly took a wise approach. When there are capes and cowls in every Metropolis corner, doesn't it make sense to avoid the usual tropes? No. There's a lot of talk about stereotypes and tropes, of which an alternative term would just be reality. There's a reason why stories keep getting repeated in multiple things. It's because they're true. Because they happen a lot. It's because people can relate to them. Because they're a very common human experience. They're not bad things. If you see something as a trope and think that means bad thing, you will avoid every single trope and then you'll just make a story that doesn't make sense and nobody can relate to because it doesn't happen. Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work? I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. You're pure evil. And you're just another man taking credit for a woman's work. like fridging isn't a bad thing because actually the story of a man losing a loved one that he cares about and then going out and doing an action to avenge his loved one that's a story that men can relate to that plays to something that humans feel and if you avoid it because somebody else did it once you're an idiot like the people that made madam web oh it's become a bit of a trope that superheroes are in superhero movies so we're not gonna put any in that doesn't make you smart that makes you more of an idiot than every single other superhero movie which is why you did the worst of all the superhero superhero movies. And moreover, make a superhero movie for women and young girls who don't go to the cinema to see these movies. <laughs> Except it didn't work. Well, it can't work because they don't go to the cinema to see these movies. I don't know if women are enough to carry the box office here. I know they're not enough. We have all the numbers we need to know they're not enough. But like, well, you know, I don't want it to be true, so we'll keep not believing it for a while. It'll only cost us a few hundred million to check it, says a veteran studio source outside of Sony. Indeed, males make up 65 to 70% of the superhero audience, and yet we're still too stupid to put two and two together. Is 70 more than 30? Who knows? In in the case of Madam Web, the percentage of female viewers was still only 46%, despite the fact that we targeted the entire movie at them and 75% of the marketing. At least. We don't know where the other 25% went. 
Could have gone on Pinterest. We're in a transition when it comes to superhero movies. Yes, yes, you're transferring away from quality movies to trash ones. I don't know how big this is or what the other side looks like. Bankruptcy. It may be fewer movies, but bigger brands. I think it'd be cheaper movies, hopefully with vastly different people making them. If Sony's upcoming Spider-Man universe title Craven is a gigantic hit, the narrative could be completely different. Okay, let me know down in the comments below, do any of you care about the Craven movie? Or even know who he is? I'm not a comic book guy, but I've never heard of him in my entire life. Maybe we should set these people up in movies with characters that people know, that they're going to go and see, before we start giving them their own movies. Just an idea. I have a feeling Craven will be another Morbius. The current mood at Sony is gloomy. An insider says, Rothman is known for keeping a close watch over budgets. It was reported that Madam Web cost 80 million, but the actual number is in the low 100 million range according to several sources and their only saving grace is well it's far less than two or 300 million <laughs> yep they'll lose a lot less than they could have done interestingly madam web reviewers are earnestly making the case that it could find a second life as a camp classic the purest form of camp it's a travesty a disaster that i enjoyed the hell out of while such backhanded compliments are hard solace for sony there's an argument that if you're going to fail you may as well fail big because something worse than being bad is being forgettable. I mean, if that's your argument, I would release it on streaming quick. You would have to ride the hype of bad reviews all the way into streaming, because no one's going to the cinema to laugh at this. Maybe in the Philippines, where apparently it did pretty well. Madam Web dominates the Philippines box office with a historic PHP 10.4 million. It's nice that it was successful somewhere. So I don't know if Madam Web is destined to become a legendary sleepover watch. Don't know many guys that have sleepovers. So I don't think Airgen has quite nailed it. It doesn't matter how much cope you have, your target audience doesn't exist. That's not to say that this film won't get referenced in the same breaths as She-Hulk or Willow. Looked back fondly on when you're like, you know, that ADR was awful. Yeah, it was like Madam Web. But there is a sort of uh, group, a normal person, a, a stereotype or trope, which actually likes that kind of thing. And it ain't people that have sleepovers. It takes a certain kind of gallows humour to appreciate the comedy in a car crash. That's why the Mary Sue will never understand the appeal. That's why they can't laugh at it and they always think it's malicious. Because quite frankly, Mary, this isn't made for you. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe more videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.